Ben, we've got a fantastic throwback with a lot of, because actually later with Joshua, we're going to talk about these uh, get back to work protests and how to think about them in an intelligent way. And I think that that's actually very relevant to this great Alexander Coburn clip we're about to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually about two thirds of the way through a Jacobin column about the anti-lockdown protests. And I think that, um, you know, the Coburn, uh, Coburn uh, clip is from uh, 2009, I believe, you know, so it's when uh, all the healthcare town halls with the Tea Party protests were going on. And I think the way he talks about it, the way he talks about the protests themselves, about the difference between recognizing the manipulative cynicism of, of the leaders and the legitimate concerns of the lead, um, and the way he talks about how the left screws up its response, all of it, I think, could apply to the anti-lockdown protests. Yeah, we got yeah, here. Definitely. That's gonna do the regulating. That here, you know, Wall Street's in greater disrepute in the country than at any time since what, the early 30s. Yet, oh, it's very dubious that Obama, if he really even really tries, can get through financial regulation. It's going to go down because, first of all, you know, his own um, Emmanuel's positions are very questionable. Secondly, you know, the, the Senate Finance Committee and the Finance Committees in the House are bought and paid for. But, and there's no real pressure from, that is being pushed Strongly enough, I mean, I think a lot of the Glenn Beck demonstrators, you know, it, it wouldn't take them much to be, it's the most stupefying sight to hear these people say that, you know, we're getting into too much debt. It shows how much incredible confusion there is out there, which is being, of course, mercilessly exploited by, you know, semi-insane people like Beck, who is, a, I think, a total cynic, by the way. <laughs> I think uh, those, right, those, those talk show shock jocks of the right are, 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 are totally cynical. And, and Beck, I don't think he means about it two-thirds of what he actually says, if you can remember what he said ten minutes later. Uh, but those people, I think it would be, you know, I see a hundred articles come in every day saying, you know, we, we hear the, the footfall of fascism. The left loves to terrify itself, jumps at every shadow. Oh, fascism, it's in the room again, <laughs> you know? And that, once you've shouted that, you've then, instead of seeing actually people, confused, frightened people who should be talked to, you're, you're seeing, you know, some, some picture of a Nazi stormtrooper. It's a stupid way of proceeding because you haven't gone and asked them what they think. You haven't made any effort to say, well, actually, you're, what you're being used at in the most cynical and disgusting way imaginable is, a, is you're, you're becoming a foot soldier for the insurance industry. But what are they meant to think when they look at the Obama health insurance and they realize that basically what the plan is is to deliver 30 million people to the insurance industry? You know, in a few years down the road, you won't be able to register your car in the state of California without having to produce your personal insurance card, which would then you'll be, and you know, on your deathbed, you'll have the comfort of being cheated out by the insurance company. So people have every right to be dubious about, you know, what the, the use of the public option is. So there is, I think, a huge number of people who are potentially up to grabs. And one of the problems with the left is it, you know, it tends to form a small tight circle with the guns pointing in and then they fire. Yeah. I, well, yeah, I mean, a lot. barely anything to add to that. I will just say, and Dr. West is talking about Trump and corporate leadership and maybe a certain tendency in the electorate. But I, I want to hold those, those dueling truths where you don't underestimate the, the unique, profound threat of Trump, which I think is silly to deny. But then on the other hand, you also recognize the ways in which he's just a standard Republican. You also recognize the appeals of right-wing populism uh, that are economic. And then, yeah, a lot of these people, look, if you don't think they're reachable, then you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think there's a whole lot of contradiction between, like, I think he's folk, the way we remember the Nazis is problematic from like the sort of Lenny Riefenstahl style triumph of the will because it focuses on the madness of crowds and like right. how the people got out of hand. There's a movie about the wave too where kids like they just socially conformed into becoming Nazis basically like that. And instead what we need to talk about is the political and – oh, my cat's literally walking on the mixer. The political and business elite and their complicity with fascism because that's who fascism works for. Right. Mm. That's it. But I love the attitude. 
I think, I mean, honestly, like this is a big, something that's very important to me, um, you know, having, you know, being from the South and having lived in both Texas and South Carolina, you know, I know a lot of people who are Republicans um, and on that side of the spectrum who are like, who are good people. And, and, and a lot of them are, are actually just confused. Yep. And you sit down and you talk to them. I'll tell you, I mean, especially growing up, not only in the South, but growing up poor, right? A lot of people, like, for example, I remember, God, um, uh, Rand Paul, right? You know, that, that moron, like I have, you know, a friend who like got all into like this Rand Paul thing. And the reasons were, they're like, I think it's time for us to stop fighting wars, and for us, to, you know, and it's like it was like, actually it was a genuine, Great reasons. correct impulse, right? But there's somebody out there, like a, a villain out there, who's trying to attract you to their side, and and then sell you a lot of other nonsense along the way. And that's how the right functions there, um, you know. And I say this all the time. You know, there's a lot of people where I'm from who are pissed off about the world. They don't like their boss. They see the Democratic Party as the party of bosses. They see the Democratic Party as the party of lawyers and the well-off and people with nice suits. So, I mean, as ridiculous as, and confused as it is, there's like there's a germ of, uh, of potential um, for us to, to come in and like, you know, really kind of do a lot of work and radicalize uh, communities that, yeah, desperately people are, are, are confused and they're trying to do something about it. Um, and, and it's being taken advantage of right now by the right. But I think this kind of like elitist, like liberal attitude that you look at the at people who were, you know, like in the Tea Party time and then, um, you know, today, too, who are, are generally like, you know, they're worried about what's going on. And, and we need to be out there supplying them with answers instead of just saying, oh, you guys are fascists and, you know, basically pushing them the rest of the way into the arms of the right wing. <laughs> yeah, blaming the there's nothing to be gained for the left from blaming people. Yeah. Can I also just add, I mean, that I also love the and also that psychological tendency on the left to both blame and demonize people, get inside and have endless infights and stupidity, but also be like scared of its own shadow. Yeah. And that, which is, I love. And then it also relates to how he talks about Beck. And also we'll do a reading, but Colburn had this hilarious essay that he wrote it when, because, you know, if you guys remember in 2010, I mean, Beck was the big crazy right wing guy at the time. And he was also really into, you know, you could watch him. If you ever wanted a little wish fulfillment, you could watch, you'd be like, Oh my God, Obama's a fucking Islamic socialist. I had no idea. Maybe we're headed for good times in this country. And, you know, cause he would do these charts and talk about these obscure academics and how they, you know, influenced Obama, you know, meanwhile, Obama, of course, is just a wall street Democrat. And I love that Coburn had this line where he's like, you know, he's so scared, like at last some respect, you know, like I love <laughs> watching Glenn Beck. And and I think like it actually reminds me of, of the Gavin McGinnis thing. It's like you, you have the and part of the reason that we should strongly support free speech is the confidence and the frankly, the kind of benign contempt. Mm -hmm. These people suck. They're losers. They're corporate bag men oh yeah we have something so much better and by the way coburn's diagnosis of beck has been sh sh proven out so much since then because like after you know they're like all the years as like the deranged conspiracy theorist with the you know chalkboard drawing the connections mm -hmm. and you know, here's the weather underground and here's Francis Scott Piven and, you know, here's, you know, here's Obama. Like after all that, right. Then he went like never Trump. Yep. Uh, when he thought that was the winning ticket. And there was this weird period of like woke back where he was like doing yeah. this like apology tour about how like, you know, he, he helped poison the discourse. And, yep. you know, he was too extreme, and and you know, and and he added to the disunity of the country. And he was on Samantha B and all this stuff. And then uh, I think the money dried up in that, and <laughs> he went on Hannity and announced that uh, he supports Trump. Oh, there was no. There, I mean, there, yeah, there was there was a wash up, and he. I think he was banking on the idea that Trump would lose. And he would buy some mainstream credibility, but also retain the right and kind of say like, hey, look, you guys, you you lost the way. And because I think he, he was trying to be like kind of white Oprah, white guy Oprah. And then Trump won and the thing just fell out. And now he's 
you know, and now, and now, yeah, I think, I think he, you know, now he's just a big Trump guy, but I mean, no, I, you know, Colburn got it. And again, that, that sort of like that so much of the left has this utter contempt for normal people. And then this like, Hor- they're horrified by these like mid rank fucking assholes who look, of course they're pernicious and of course they sure. propagandize. And obviously all of these, you know, types are terrible, but like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ever, totally. you know? <laughs> and, and it's such a weird combination too, because on the one hand, there's this kind of delusion that you can like write off, like that you could win politically at the same time is like writing off the entire population of people who are kind of like confused and buy into some Republican talking points, mm-hmm. right? That like, so, but like, like that, like just that there's this, this mathematical delusion that somehow you can win, you could build a winning coalition without any of those people. Uh, but like at the same time, um, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's that either like somehow we're both so confident that like we don't even need to worry about trying to like talk to these people or bring them around. We can just like, you know, like just have nothing to do with all of them. They're all dead to us until they apologize for being bad people. But at the same time, somehow, despite thinking that we have the super majority, uh, so often leftists, yeah, just just are terrified of 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 our own shadow. That like you know that it's like so it's it's this weird oscillated between thinking that everybody's already with us somehow and thinking that like we're right on the brink of being like totally wiped out by resurgent fascism. Exactly. All props to the great Alexander Coburn. Ben Burgess is always amazing having you appreciate you stay safe, stay well. Uh, Guys, let's take a real quick break and then we'll come back with Joshua Con Russell. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.